It's a bear. Good morning. Hey, what's up? This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. Got the uh, Deerfield Live Beach Cam up here. And it uh, looks like we got a couple of Bermuda chubs swimming around there and a few others. I think I just saw a barracuda go by as well. <clears throat> a little cloudy out there as far as the weather and the water. <laughs> Uh, but no less, it's always a beautiful day down here, man. I love Florida. It's, uh, it's my home. Well, let's take a look at uh, what's going on in spot prices today and what my feelings are about the non-event that was supposed to be the, uh, the great Russian invasion. I'll go over that in a few moments. Uh, also, what I think that it, the effect of this has had on markets. Um, I, see, I think we're seeing some strength here in gold, primarily in gold. Silver is actually doing quite well, but... Uh, a lot of strength in the gold market since the, uh, uh, the Russian invasion narrative had come up. And obviously it has turned into a non-event. Markets are kind of showing that if there had been indeed a real Russian invasion, gold would probably be uh, well over $2,000 right now. Oil would be 150 And the markets, uh, equity markets, would be completely sideways. But everyone knows this was just what, what does the Fed do the best? What does the government do the best? Jawboning. It was simply jawboning, trying to push Russia and trying to push these little regions around. And uh, again, I'll get into that in a few moments. Let's take a look at prices first. Uh, so let's, uh, 1903 currently, a low of 1890, a high of 1904. We're just sitting at that $1,900 mark. Uh, I kind of, kind of thinking, in my opinion right now though, uh, <clears throat> If we don't see any weakening of the gold and silver markets uh, over this non-event, this non-invasion invasion, again, if there was an invasion, the, the markets gold and silver would be through the through the roof. Uh, treasuries would be bid up probably. The uh, 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 crypt, I don't know about cryptos. They have done nothing. It kind of surprised the hell out of me. But uh, um, as far as oil goes, I mean, oil would be right through the roof right now. So no, no invasion. There wasn't an invasion. They're going to try to spin it as some type of invasion. But like I said, we'll read about that in a little bit. If there was, this price would be up dramatically, uh, dramatically. Okay. Uh, look at silver uh, hanging on to that $24 level. That's pretty damn good if you ask me. Low at $24.05, a high at $24.35. You know, silver's making them 30 and 50 cent uh, moves up and down, which is very healthy in my opinion. Looks like silver wants to go somewhere to the upside, and uh, it will. It will. Again, we're going to wake up one morning and have our holy crap moments. Or Holy crap, what happened? <laughs> uh, and platinum, 1090 She wants to break that $1,100 mark. Uh, as I felt too, platinum and palladium would have also uh, uh, gone up dramatically too had there been a real invasion because a lot of palladium and platinum does come out of Russia. I think all these markets, the gold markets, the oil markets are telling us that uh, uh, there is no invasion. There was no invasion. There is no invasion actually. They're trying to call uh, Russia putting in peacekeeping troops an invasion. But again, I'll get into that and I'll explain why it's not what the uh, press, the media, and the governments want you to believe it is. Uh, 2405, 2435, we're sitting at that high right now. That's pretty cool. Uh, normally, <clears throat> our highs would have been in the morning a bit earlier. Uh, I don't know what that noise is outside. Sorry about that. Uh, 1,090 on platinum, 1,076 a low, 1,095 the high. So, uh, boy, we're bumping up close to the $1,100 mark. Um, I think, as I said, if the markets hold up like they are right now, for the rest of the week through Friday, maybe dare I even say through Sunday night and Monday when the monkey hammering is typically done. Um, I'm liking these levels. I think they're pretty good. I think we're kind of here to stay at this level for a little while. Uh, and this is probably the next leg upward. Uh, the uh, invasion never happened. I never said it, I never thought it would. <clears throat> and I explained in a couple of my videos why I thought it was all just jawboning as it has turned out to be. Uh, let's take a look at the 24 hour swings here. and. Uh, Again, politics, you know, you have to talk about politics uh, to talk about gold and silver. A lot of uh, um, news, a lot of political news and economic mo news moves the price of silver and gold up and down. This is why I discuss it all the time. It's very important. I know some people are sick of politics, and quite frankly, I am too. And I'm sick of the lies that we get from uh, our economic leaders and our bankers out there. But you know what? you got to talk about it. You have to talk about it. Um, oh, sip of coffee here. Sorry about that. And let's see what i got going on here. Hmm. Looks like uh, all the action in, there's our green line right here. It's just, market's been sideways, actually, since last night. Since, look at yesterday. 
you know, yesterday the New York market, which is kind of sideways in that 1900 range, uh, kind of doing the same thing today as well, a little slingshot uh, here back upwards, a little dip down and a slingshot back up, and again, trading sideways until we get to the New York market, where we can see gold did shoot up a little bit here today, uh, 1900, and again, it's staying at this 1900 uh, range. I'm a bit perplexed. I kind of thought that once the uh, uh, Ukraine event turned into a non-event, like I knew it was going to be, uh, that we would actually see some monkey hammering in the markets, but we have not seen that. Uh, maybe the key word would be yet, okay? But uh, uh, there still may be some good dip opportunity buying here. Uh, again, if they manage to monkey hammer these prices on Friday uh, or, Mon or Sunday or Monday night, I think that's probably the likely time it's going to happen. Uh, let's take a look at silver, and I suspect we're going to see about the same thing with silver. Take a look at this. Markets generally flat yesterday in that $24 range. And we did get to, uh, uh, well, in the morning, actually, we did get sub-24, but take a look at that. It rebounded up pretty fast and stayed in that 24 range. Uh, so it's kind of like holding on to these levels, a $1,900 gold level, a $24 gold level. Not quite sure what that's telling us, but I, as I said for the fourth time, I think if it holds up through Friday, or I should say next Sunday, Monday, um, I'm liking these levels. I think we've uh, set in some new plateaus here, some new averages. And where are we at with silver? Look at that. New York is where the action is in silver. Funny that a lot of the up and down action, most of the up and down action in precious metals markets, uh, gold and silver, <clears throat> you know, on the extreme side, uh, except for yesterday and today somewhat, uh, but silver a little bit right here, you take a look, uh, gold kind of flat, but silver uh, jumping up quite substantially this morning uh, from that 2410 range to that 2435 range where we're sitting right now. Uh, and again, where is that happening? It's happening in the New York Crimex markets, of course. Uh, but to the upside, to much of our pleasure here uh, to see. Well, like I said, let's see how that holds up through the week. Uh, Bitcoin prices, uh, I was really surprised, you know, I was surprised that uh, Bitcoin, you know, I, I thought that in times of war, in times of economic trouble and, and this and that, uh, that uh, Bitcoin prices would uh, do like gold, be a good secure, you know, a secure, you know, a secure way to hold your wealth wealth preservation, but this has not proven the case at all with Bitcoin. In fact, what, what perplexes me, maybe someone out there can answer, Bitcoin is almost running up and down with the equity markets. Isn't that a bit strange? I don't, I don't see how or why. Maybe because it has been financialized by the big banks and the regulators, maybe that's why it's just moving up and down with the uh, uh, equities markets for the most part, or it seems to. Um, but we haven't seen any of the big, I mean, what is your one, one year chart right now? You're still down 20%. Uh, and uh, your one week chart, you're down 11%. The volatility of this is just too crazy for me, like a casino. Um, so as far as wealth preservation, I, I just think Bitcoin and cryptos are not it at all. And the, you know, I wouldn't be a buyer and holder forever, that's for sure. I suspect some of them are gonna just entirely disappo disappear at some point. Huh. Okay, I know what that buzzing noise is. You hear that beeping noise in the background? Some truck out back, security truck shredding papers. I don't know why it's got a beep when it's doing it, though. <laughs> All right, uh, Trudeau, Trudeau just closed the Bitcoin argument. I talked about this for a while, that one of the uh, big Bitcoin pluses is that governments could not touch it, that it was completely safe, uh, that you could put your money there. And uh, again, governments couldn't touch it unless you lost your password, no one can steal it. But that's not the case, folks. We're finding out more and more that there is a lot more control over the cryptocurrencies than we, we were led to believe or that a lot of the uh, uh, crypto uh, bugs, um, and there are crypto bugs out there like gold bugs, they, you know, <laughs> but uh, crypto bugs out there were just adamant that uh, it's the most private, safe way to move money around. Now, on a peer-to-peer -peer basis, I know this is true, but if you want to cash out with any financial institutions, again, Bitcoin bugs were saying, oh, man, it's great, it's great, it's going mainstream. Now it's going to be, you know, the big financial institutions are getting involved. Well, you see how much good that did you. Look at where this market is today. Highly regulated and probably highly manipulated as well, and not the privacy that we were promised, that's for sure. Uh, let's take a look at this article. It's on Seeking Alpha. Uh, done by Kevin George, uh, well done article. Uh, in, in an article back in October, I warned that Bitcoin may have topped. The price proceeded to a fall 50%, has struggled to regain its previous bull market. Last week, we have seen actions by the Canadian government to block Bitcoin payments to the Freedom Convoy. 
I'll describe why Trudeau has just shut down the argument for Bitcoin. I'm going to take a sip of coffee. And the article's not too long, folks. You can read it yourself for free as well. Give me one sec. Hmm. Uh, <clears throat> court order moves to freeze crypto assets. Uh, I'm going to blow that up a little bit. The Canadian Truckers Freedom Convoy, which has been protesting COVID mandates over the last few years, has entered new territory. The country's lawmakers are taking federal action to shut down funding and unleash tougher police response. And of course, you guys know my opinion on that. Uh, it's the same as many of your opinions. Uh, last week, except for the fascist people out there, <laughs> last week saw funds in over 120 crypto addre addresses ordered to be frozen in a special injunction by an Ontario court. Uh, Mariva, uh, I believe it's how to say it, was injunction was signed on Thursday by the Ontario Superior Court Judge this uh, Court of Justice Judge Callum McLeod. The injunction will freeze blockchain addresses. Okay, folks, I'm going to repeat this. The injunction will freeze blockchain addresses in multiple cryptocurrencies. This type of injunction is used in the UK and Canada to freeze the defendant's assets in order to prevent them from being spent, hidden, or moved ahead of judgment. The private suit also instructs several financial institutions, platforms, and digital exchanges to freeze any transactions related to wallets of digital addresses. The financial institutions include TD Canada Trust, ATB Financial, and fundraising platforms. Digital asset platforms and exchanges were also listed, including Binance, Smart Chain, and PancakeSwap. The news came a day after Canadian government froze 34 crypto addresses in connection with ongoing trucking protests, which have blocked bridges and border crossings in the USA. They froze 34 crypto addresses, folks. Now, I know some of you folks out there are saying, well, you got to keep your cryptos in a hard wallet, which means that it's uh, exactly what it says. It's like in a wallet. Uh, and hopefully you don't lose that wallet, it doesn't get destroyed or anything like that because all your crypto will be gone then. But you have to store it in some kind of hard wallet where no one has internet access to it. Then you would have to do a peer-to-peer -to, -peer to spend it, okay? This is the options you have. Uh, the idea that uh, it's just, com I remember when everyone used to say, oh, Bitcoin, it's completely anonymous. And then we turned out, uh, that was such a bullshit. <laughs> uh, it's not completely anonymous. It never was. <clears throat> and uh, uh, we're, we're finding out a lot of things that we were told that uh, Bitcoin was going to do for us. It got to make me wonder if Bitcoin is just a government scam by the CIA, NSA, or some uh, operation out there, or maybe even the Fed to get people used to a digital currency, and then they'll yank the Bitcoin rug out and introduce their own uh, 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 central bank currencies. Uh, but let's get to that here in a moment. Uh, what does this mean for Bitcoin? Bitcoin holders should take note of this week's development because the same thing will happen to the coin in the future. The government of the largest world's economies are letting you have a peaceful protest with your decentralized digital money, but when the time is right, they will come down hard and insert their own CBDC, central bank digital currencies, and this is what I've been thinking for years now. I think the uh, Bitcoin and, uh, uh, is just kind of a pathway for a future CBDC. And uh, it wouldn't surprise me if uh, Bitcoin was actually, they say it was some guy named Satoshi, but we don't know who Satoshi is. I'm betting Satoshi was probably some uh, government entity or a banking entity. That's who I'm betting. Uh, but I digress. Uh, the path ahead has already been shown by China, which crushed its mining industry and exchanges as they get closer to digital yuan through pilot programs. I have warned about this in my previous articles, and any doubters should read up on their monetary history. This is correct. Uh, governments have never stepped aside to let an upstart this. I, and again, one of my central premises with Bitcoin as the future and Ethereum as the future, I've always said it from day one, uh, and, I'm, and I'm not the original person that said this, governments and banks hate competition. I'll say it again, governments and banks hate competitions, okay? So here we go, let me read what he says, which kind of reiterates that. Governments have never stepped aside to let an upstart or decentralized monetary system take hold. Investors have already seen the greatest lengths to which the nations have gone to protect their hegemony. I'm sorry, uh, of the uh, world's financial system with global conflicts, uh, massive bailouts, and quantitative easing programs. Uh, the U.S. is getting closer to the regulation of the cryptocurrency industry with the Biden administration's move on to an executive order this week. Okay, so Biden's putting out an executive order this week. Bitcoin enthusiasts think this will bring acceptance of the coin's future destiny as the linchpin of a new financial world. Again, uh, the Bitcoin bugs are really, really not looking at the big picture here and, and who's got their eyes on them. It is more likely to signal the end of Bitcoin as a serious threat. According to earlier reports, the study will also include financial stability issues in the use of cryptocurrencies and digital assets. 
Measures to protect the market will be suggested by the Office of Control of Currency, uh, the OCC. Uh, and by the way, the OCC is the one that's supposed to be taking care of and watching after Bank of America with their, with their uh, massive 800 uh, uh, million ounces of, uh, uh, what was it, 800 million ounces or something. Gosh, I forget how, how large that trade is, 800 billion ounces of uh, silver short position that they have. Uh, Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation, the Commodity Futures uh, Trading, and all worthless entities, because we all know that these uh, regulating agencies don't do anything pretty much, uh, especially in the precious metal markets. But it looks like they're going to be real active in your Bitcoin market for sure, folks. Uh, Federal Reserve issue, officials have previously labeled Tether as a threat to financial stability. This was followed by UK policymaker at the Bank of England who said Bitcoin would trigger a financial meltdown and tough regulation was needed. Again, for the third time, I've said it over and over, banks and governments hate competition, folks. It's not going to happen. They're going to regulate this stuff down or they're going to take it away from you somehow or, or switch you into something else. Uh, that was before BOE said earlier that the coin could become worthless. China has warned you of what governments will do to protect the control of the financial system. The central banks are warning you to get out. Bitcoin cannot be shut down, but the, here, this is the key thing. Bitcoin cannot be shut down, but the governments control the fiat money off ramps and can render digital wallets useless. All right. So there you go. And that's absolutely true, folks. We've been talking about this for a long time. Uh, let's kind of go in here a little bit uh, more. And what, what about Ukraine? This week gave Bitcoin enthusiasts another headline to cling to with news that Ukraine had legalized Bitcoin. The country's parliament approved the final reading of a bill to legalize Bitcoin and cryptocurrencies. However, the country has not made Bitcoin legal tender. At present, they've only seen a tiny, you know, only El Salvador has, and they have little to lose from trying out something new. Uh, the time of Ukraine moves uh, uh, means that little for Bitcoin when control of the country is on the brink of being contested by Western blah, 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 and we'll get into that here in a bit. And uh, hmm, let's see what his conclusion is, all right? Um, all right, since it's the end, we'll, we'll, we'll figure out his conclusion. It's well written by Kevin George. Again, you can read this for free on Seeking Alpha. I do have a subscription here. Uh, Bitcoin has replaced gold as a go-to asset for some analysts seeking an end to the current financial system. While both would have their benefits, the governments are not ready to step aside and let a decentralized uh, system emerge. So, you know, that's what BTC has going against it. BTC enthusiasts have been losing the fight over the last year as the coin has lost big ground from 64,000, which was uh, Bitcoin's high, and is at the risk of further losses after the positive catalyst dried up. Uh, just in time for further weakness is a U.S. government and global central bank click that is ready to clamp down on, on that sector, the crypto sector. Countries such as China and Russia have been more aggressive, but when the time is right, the West will follow, and that's absolutely true, folks. The final argument for Bitcoin is that it cannot be shut down, but the Canadian government just destroyed that thesis last week. Bitcoin cannot be stopped, but governments can shut down the fiat off-ramps and make mainstream adoption a pipe dream. And folks, as I've said, the primary reason Bitcoin and, and uh, Ethereum and those kind of things will never survive as money uh, uh, because, or as a form of money is because governments and banks hate competition. You know, they can't destroy gold because central banks own it. But Bitcoin, they have not a care in the world for it. Well, let's take a look at uh, what I was talking about. Listen, Ukraine is a very interesting place. There's uh, made, a few folks have made comments out there, and I can tell a lot of people are really ignorant on Ukraine. You know, and, and that, I don't mean that in a bad way, all right? Uh, the reason I understand Ukraine is because my girlfriend's Ukrainian. I've been with her for a long time, and I made an effort to know more about what's happening in her country than she does. And this is the truth. She asked me what's going on there. So I, sincerely, I really do. I read not just corporate news. I mean, I read all types of news. And I'm not a fan of corporate news. Mostly they lie to you, and they're, they're trying to spin a narrative. But I read blogs from all over the country. I read what's actually happening, not what the opinion of people's uh, what they think is happening as well. I read what's happening. I make my own assessments. I take a look at things. I try to use the most unbiased sources that I can. And here's what I do know about Ukraine. Ukraine has been a uh, very uh, uh, multi, there's so many different types of people, eth ethnicities there. Uh, there. There's so many types of people in Ukraine that are from different groups, okay? The, the part that's uh, Lugansk, I believe, and uh, 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 Donetsk and Lugansk, Luhansk, I'm sorry, uh, are on the border with Russia. 
A vast majority of people that live in these two regions right here, uh, Donetsk and Luhansk, on the, uh, on the border side of Russia, are mostly Russian peoples. They have been there for hundreds and hundreds of years, uh, and I don't want to say thousands, I don't know exactly how long, but they've been there for a long time. They're Russian speaking mostly, the vast majority speak Russian. Now up in the northern region along the border of Poland, you've got people that speak Ukraine, and you've got people that are uh, mostly dark haired, dark eyed. Uh, and then in the lower regions of Ukraine, you've got again, different ethnic groups. So, so Ukraine is made up of a lot of different ethnic groups. All right, that's the first thing we need to know. Uh, and that uh, uh, Ukraine itself is an ethnic, I mean, Kiev, the ruling body of Ukraine, is an ethnic group by itself. Again, mostly Ukrainian people that live along the border speak Ukraine, don't have a lot in common with the Russians as much as their, their who used to be their uh, own kinspeople uh, in Donetsk and uh, Luhansk. Um, uh, used to be their own, you know, their, their own citizens, used to be their own fellow peoples, okay, uh, were Russian. And that was, worked fine for many, many, many years. Uh, and as we know, Ukraine has always been a corrupt state. I mean, from day one, it has been a corrupt state. Uh, I mean, we, we know that with the Biden deal, pretty much, and I'm not going to get into that. And uh, we also know that uh, 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 Ukraine uh, did not, the pre they had a revolution, when was it, this new president that's in there, and I followed this. Uh, they had a revolution um, s a couple years back, I forget, four or five, six years ago, gosh, my, my time frames just suck, but um, where the United States, in cooperation probably with some other European countries, we overthrew the, the legally elected, as legal as it can be in Ukraine or anywhere else in the world apparently now, their legally elected president, we overthrew it. The, the, the CIA did. Uh, uh, Ambassador Newland for Ukraine at the time got caught in a leaked phone call talking about the coup that we were going to take the, the elected. And again, the president at the time before this one was a Russian guy, more a Russian descent. Okay, he was Ukrainian, but he was more Russian descent. Remember what I told you, it's, it's, a, it's a mixed region there, okay? And the, uh, the, the, the gentleman that was the president at the time was probably from the Donetsk and Luhansk region or the, that side of the country where it was mostly occupied by people from um, uh, Russia. Kind of similar to what you would see like, uh, you know, mostly uh, Los Angeles has a very Hispanic, uh, 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 large amount of Hispanic people because of the region, you know, that's close to Mexico. Um, as opposed to uh, uh, the state of uh, uh, North Carolina or South Carolina, which is far away from Mexico. South Carolina and North Carolina are going to have your more traditional uh, American white-skinned peoples and the black-skinned peoples, okay? That's the way uh, Ukraine is set up, all right? So we, we literally years ago, through a coup, the CIA did, and we knocked out their, their elected president and we put the current president that's in office there, okay? The, you know, the current guy that's in office. We didn't put him there directly, but you know, we were talking about who we wanted to see. That's what the leaked phone call with Ambassador Newland from the United States talks about. And this is how we know that the United States was involved in a coup and overthrowing their past president. Of course, this pissed off Russia. And after that happened, Russia said, screw that, we're taking the, crime, you know, the Crimea. Uh, and uh, they, took, they, they took the Krim. Uh, which had, the Krim had a lot of uh, uh, strategic benefits for Russia to kind of walk in there. First, uh, the Crimea was mostly Russians again, uh, Russian peoples, not Ukrainian peoples per se, you know, uh, or the more ethnic Ukrainian, it was primarily Russian. So Russia pretty much says, okay, Donetsk, Luhansk was fighting with the Ukrainian peoples because Donetsk, Luhansk, uh, Luhansk and the Crimea Basically, when the election, when the new president came in and we overthrew the old uh, president, they basically said we want to have nothing because they basically, that was their president. They were represented by that guy. So they basically said, all right, if you're going to overthrow governments, we're going to uh, separate from the country. It kind of be like, uh, uh, you know, with uh, Trump winning or something like that. If Trump won this next election and California just said, screw it, we're going to leave the union, California. We'd probably be better off for it. <laughs> California and some other countries. Again, I'm not saying, or, or Biden for that matter. Biden won in Florida and Texas says we're leaving the union, okay? Same way, same way. That's basically what happened in Donetsk and Luhansk. Uh, except, you know, again, it was a coup. Imagine a coup in the United States where, where Biden or, uh, uh, Biden or, oh my, sorry, Trump, uh, were uh, taken out of office by a coup by Russia, okay? 
Uh, can you imagine that, uh, and then installed was somebody in their favor, okay? Can you imagine what uh, Texas and Florida would feel like if uh, that happened with Biden or what California would feel like if that happened with uh, um, uh, Trump? Uh, yeah. Oh, so anyways, I kind of to make a long story short, that's why these two regions in the Crimea broke off. However, Russia tactically was smart enough to realize that they didn't want, and I don't mean this in a bad way, but they didn't want Donetsk and Lohansk. All they wanted Donetsk and Lohansk was is to protect their Russian border against the NATO advance, okay? And they actually didn't have to move into the country to do this. They just recognized these two regions as being independent of Ukraine. Let them do it themselves. So there is no invasion. They did send in peacekeeping troops because as soon as Russia recognized these two regions as being uh, uh, independent from Ukraine, uh, the tactical smart thing for Ukraine to, to do uh, would have been to send in more troops uh, and try to push the border even closer to Russia, or even better, just for Ukraine to invade their own regions there, or what were their own regions at one time. Uh, but no less, the reason that this is a big giant shit show is because Ukraine listened to the United States and NATO. <laughs> so what they should have done is stayed neutral and uh, 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 plucked the benefits from both countries, all right? But again, super corrupt country uh, and uh, uh, not even run by Ukraine. I believe Ukraine is probably run by the United States, UK, and uh, uh, some other NATO countries uh, in the back in the back area. All right. Okay. Let's read this. That didn't take long. White House, along with CNN, has already called Vladimir's recognition of the Ukrainian breakaway. Republics, uh, and of course, they're going to call an invasion. This, even as European allies are stopping noticeably short of such dramatic and ratcheted language. An invasion is an invasion, and that is what is underway. A top national security advisor. Uh, who assists Jake Sullivan, gosh, I can't believe that guy is even in charge of anything, uh, told uh, CNN host, uh, uh, whoever, who not in agreement with the assessment, of course they would, White House principal deputy, uh, because CNN is the mouthpiece for this current administration, White House uh, pr principal deputy national, that's too much words. <laughs> God, how would they give these people titles like that? Let's just say this guy, jerk, Jonathan Finer, was asked by Keeler whether or not we were witnessing an invasion. He called it fulfillment of what the president said would transpire. <laughs> Apparently claimed that the mere recognition of a breakaway republic means the administration's prior imminent invasion narrative over the past weeks has come true. Folks, the invasion was bullshit from the start. It was just a way to keep your mind off of uh, what idiots are running the current show right now. Uh, what do I call that? A red herring. The invasion has been a red herring the whole time, folks. Uh, again, we got midterms coming up here. The, the economy is sucking wind because of these people. Uh, your, 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 your rights out there, your constitutional rights are sucking wind because of these people. I think they know they're going to lose pretty heavily, and they were really, really pushing for a war because, again, a war would be a red herring. It would take the focus off of the current administrations in our country and European uh, countries who are just as bad as our current administration. Um, again, it would take the, uh, again, red herring is what I believe this has been, and they're still trying to spin it into an invasion when it's clearly not. Uh, CNN anchor asked at the start of the summit, is this as you see it, as the White House sees it, as an invasion? Uh, he says, yeah, we, uh, blah, 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 we think this is, yes, the beginning of an invasion. What kind of answer is that, you freaking idiot? Uh, Russia's latest invasion in Ukraine overnight was wide invasion, my ass, reported that the Kremlin ordered what's called peacekeeping forces into the two republics in Donbass. Folks, that's exactly what's happened. Even the Russians knew once they acknowledged that that they should better send some uh, peacemaking, peacekeeping forces. And in fact, you know what's funny? This is exactly what we do. This is ex all the Russians did was take something from our own United States playbook and the NATO playbook. We, why do you think we have troops? in Syria, peacekeeping troops, folk. We have a thousand, we're not even supposed to be in Syria. Syria is a country in its own. We're, we're, we're uh, violating Syria's right as a country to, <laughs> again, we have troops illegally in Syria, United States troops illegally in Syria under the guise of peacekeeping forces, folks. So what the Russians did is they just took it right out of our own playbook, stuck it up our asses, not our asses, the idiots that are running our show, uh, which we need to get, we need to change that, folks. We really do. Uh, so anyways, <laughs> I digress. Overnight, it was uh, widely reported that criminal order is peacekeeping forces. And you're already seeing the beginning of our response. Within minutes, President Putin yesterday, we issued an executive order that blocked all economic activity. Folks, 
The economic blocks are bullshit. Russia doesn't care. They knew it years ago, like China knows. And China is a lot more precarious situation than Russia. But years and decades ago, Russia saw the United States weaponizing the U.S. dollar. Worst thing we ever did. The one thing that people all over the world loved was the U.S. dollar, okay? Even if they hated us, they loved the dollar. That included the Russians, that included the Chinese, that included Venezuelans, that included everyone across the board. Iranians, they loved the U.S. dollar. Uh, the people, okay? Until we started weaponizing it. And Russia saw the writing on the wall a long time ago. They said, you know what? At some point, we know the U.S. is going to cut us out of the U.S. dollar system, so we have to create our own deal. This is why Russia has been stockpiling gold secretly for a long time, somewhat secretly. This is why Russia has been creating its own direct payments for oil. They don't need dollars for oil anymore. And in fact, what we have done by weaponizing the dollars, now the idiots, the morons under every administration, red and blue, weaponize the dollars, folks, all right? And they probably did it at the behest of the uh, 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 military war machine and uh, secret state agencies as well, all working together to weaponize the U.S. dollar. Biggest effing mistake we ever did uh, because it ultimately killed the U.S. dollar or caused the demise of the dollar even to go faster. And that's where we're headed right now. But again, I digress. Again, I do that often. Uh, whether that uh, started, blah, 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 blah. God, these people are just, and you know what blows my mind? CNN. The, the, the party that calls themselves the liberal, the people that love peace, all right? The peaceful party, the loving party, the people that love, are so fucking warlike, it's not even funny. It's, it's just insane. Uh, I don't know what happened to the, uh, uh, you know, th they call themselves liberal, but they are anything but, okay? All right, I'm going to move out of here because I could go into a long rant about these people and about the politics and stuff. And what I'm going to really do right now is look at yesterday's video, Fascist Explained. <laughs> and, folks, if we don't talk about politics and e economics, it play we have to. It, it plays directly into gold and silver and what the prices of gold and silver. If fascists are taking over our governments, then basically what we got going on there is the fall of governments. And what is that going to do to the currency? What's that going to do to our economic system? It's going to fall as well. And, and what has been a 5,000 year, 5, years, what has been a great uh, a refuge for uh, wealth preservation? It's been gold and silver. So especially in times like this when you've got fascist and uh, uh, Marxist and uh, uh, so-called liberals running the show. And they're anything but liberal. Trust me on that. Well. Let me take a look at yesterday's comments, a few things out here, and uh, I'm going to do a sort by newest first, and scroll down the page, close your eyes if you get motion sickness, and take a sip of coffee while I'm doing this as well. Not too many comments on yesterday's video, I mean, what are you going to talk, what are you going to say about fascist, uh, mm, that he didn't say yesterday already. I'd like to thank all you folks here for uh, commenting and watching. Um, and uh, let's see, uh, take some comments here. Fashion, crony, and global equivalent synergist, no matter how you label it, the private central banks take control of governments. This is true. Thank you, Hal. And Joe King, you're not the only one sick and tired. Yep, I agree with you, Joe. Uh, Joey, what's up? Um, Blue Diamond says, premiums made me become much more selective in the silver that I bought. It also had to be in the stacker and collector market. I buy on circuit approved silver for around generic prices. The deals are there if you look. Uh, that's great, Blue Diamond Jim. For the most part, mo a lot of people are buying proof and uncirculated uh, shiny shit for way too much money, a bigger premium. But if you're out there actually shopping and looking for deals, uh, good on you, sir. Good deal. Uh, but again, pay the least premium that you possibly can on this stuff. Uh, poor man's investing says, thanks for your reply, but you misunderstood me. BTC and ETH face regulation, but how do you regulate the intractable privacy cryptos like Monero? Uh, wow, you're getting some other cryptos that I'm not familiar with. but. Uh, take a look at what I just said here recently, poor man investing. I think that kind of, uh, um, you know, the privacy is not there and they can close down the uh, exit ramps uh, at the financial institutions you would have typically got cash from. Uh, that's not good. It's not, it's not what we thought it was, actually. Uh, and again, thanks for your comments, poor man's investing, and keep commenting. I'm, I learned something from all of you folks. Uh, Scourge, this is absolutely true, and uh, I think I said it yesterday as well. I should oh, an ounce of gold. I believe you should have balance. For every gun you own, you should have an ounce of gold. <laughs> That's a pretty cool idea. Thanks, Large Farba. Uh, Colin Spiller says you could also substitute communists for fascists, and it would be the same. Oddly enough, many people believe that the rise of the Weimar, Weimar Germany is an example of why fascism is good. Debating whether fascism and communism is better is like debating whether cat shit or dog shit is better. That's true. 
good, interesting call, comments, Colin. There you make another comment up here. Uh, Colin also says, in my opinion, with the problem with Bitcoin and many other cryptos is that it takes too long to make a transaction. You need to make a transaction in a market where crypto can be taken from one and given to another instantly within a privately owned market. It'd be hard to buy a can of soda and have to wait three hours for the transaction to process. To make it work, you would need to use a market where the market moved from. Yeah, and the problem is those markets are the ones that people, they can close down on you. Uh, and, and they have. Canada's closing down those markets. So, again, my understanding for Bitcoin and other cryptos, if it's wallet to wallet, a hard wallet to another hard wallet directly, uh, yeah, yeah, they can't shut that down or it's going to be hard to. Uh, but, you know, it's just, that makes it even far more difficult. Uh, to even deal on the stuff if you're having to use hard wallets. Uh, Silver Loving Lou, thanks, Brian. Keep stacking you too. John Gordon says, You never answer my question. You just monkey hammer them. I do too, John. Uh, but I'm going to just monkey hammer this question. <laughs> thanks for watching, John. Uh, I saved a screenshot of. The, oh, thank you, sir. You rock as well. Uh, great advice. Thank you. I'd like to thank everyone here. Uh, Celtic Knot says, The United States is the biggest digital, economic, and militaristic fascist nation on earth. The fascist actually displayed on coins inside the house. Woo, that's pretty heavy. Uh, no, I don't think the United States is the biggest digital, economic, and military. I think we've allowed our government to become some of those things, uh, Celtic not, but we are not. Americans, for the most part, are good people. Uh, a little confused, some of them, at the time, but uh, for the most part, we're good people. Uh, thanks for commenting. Donald says, uh, I've always th thought that an unk half Kennedy at scrap was $2 when I bought them in twos, is better than junk, junk coins. Um, damage to 24 was fine by me. 90% uh, used to be a good deal, Don, but it's not so much right now. It's just overpriced at 475, 575 over spot. And when you can buy 100 ounce bars at spot plus three or 10 ounce bars at spot place plus three, there's no sense in buying 90. Uh, there was at one time though. Um, this I'm not quite sure. I haven't heard reports on that, but that would not surprise me. Sending in peacekeeper troops would be, uh, again, something that they probably should do. Uh, however, I think both sides should have sent in peacekeeping troops. Um, and wonder if the new, <laughs> that's pretty funny Miami boy, uh, thought you said Russia, oh here we go, Robert Kors says, well, you thought Russia wouldn't invade, but they did, they did not, Robert, that's not an invasion, give me a break, I, you're listening to the president too much <laughs> and his people, that is not an invasion, I did write down here, invasion my ass, sir, are you paying attention, that was a checkmate, well, not an invasion. And I, I'll explain it to those that don't get it in the next video, which was today's video. So, uh, Robert, I mean, Mike, I'm sorry, where you go? Robert, it is not an invasion. It's pretty clearly not an invasion. You need to stop watching CNN uh, and uh, uh, start paying attention. I wouldn't watch any corporate news. You can't trust them on this anyway. But start paying attention. It is not an invasion, sir. Not even close. If it was an invasion, you would have woke up to $3,000 gold and $200 silver. This is just what it is. It was a checkmate by Russia. Uh, a superior chess player compared to the horrible chess players we have right now working for us. Uh, Bitcoin, okay, don't want to say that, but Mr. Borat, well, thank you, I appreciate that. And I agree, who created Bitcoin? I think it was a, a government entity or a, a banking entity, personally. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm not going to repeat some of this, but thanks for commenting and, and watching. And uh, CNN should be, in a, yeah, yeah, no, CNN would interview me. In fact, uh, they'd probably trash me. Um, yeah, that's the kind of people they are, uh, corporate news. And it's tyranny. Hmm, let's see here. Oh, there's a long one. Uh, okay, I'm going to read it. Bitcoin is not the replacement of gold and silver. Bitcoin and other crypto will be replacement of the dollar since once these commies and hyperinflated to death, get your gold and silver position first, then your replacement currency or the dollar. We're headed toward a bi bimetallic two tier financial system. I see physical assets uh, and physical money. I see crypto as a currency of food. And uh, well, I see crypto as a currency of to buy food and all that other stuff because I think they're going to force us into it. I think they're forcing us into a cashless society. That's the only reason Bitcoin was ever created, to get us used to a cashless society. But of course, I have a conspiratorial viewpoint on that. As far as you should be buying recognizability and, uh, oh, okay, this is the same thing we talk about. So good on you for that. Uh, uh, we recommend uh, buying that type of stuff too. So we're on the same page. And 100% agreement in Ukraine. What happened if Russia were to take Ukraine? They would be forced to take ownership of the most corrupt country on the planet. The cost of cleaning up that cesspool would bankrupt Russia. Absolutely true, sir. This is what I've been saying. Putin completely outmaneuvered uh, Brandon Zippy the pinhead. <laughs> Ukraine loses two regions, will go on to become independent states, will be smart enough to establish close ties to Russia. Brandon and other deep state criminals lose their money laundering hub. They also lose their human trafficking hub. Very interesting that all this happens at the same time. Uh, that Gene Luck Bruno. Well, the, you're you're in the same conspiratorial mind uh, I am. This stuff is uh, yet to be known for sure, as far as uh, 
um, you know, money laundering and uh, human trafficking. I wouldn't doubt it, though. Don't get me wrong. I wouldn't doubt it, but I don't have any direct evidence to prove that. But I do know that they bumbled and they fucked up with Ukraine, folks. Uh, sorry, that's my second F word today. You notice I've been cutting down the F word, so you drinkers out there that have a shot for every F word I say, you must be going through a dry spell. <laughs> Uh, as far as the best deals out there, the best deals are not U.S. certified gold coins. Stay away from the stuff way overpriced. The best deal out there is going to be one ounce gold bars, uh, that type of thing, not gold eagles. Eagles are still overpriced. They're well over $100 over spot. Uh, definitely not worth it in my opinion. And uh, let me see what I can do here. One ounce gold bars. Best deal, spot plus 73 bucks. We have them here in our store and lower if you're buying larger quantities. Uh, again, if you go to your local dealer, ask him what he's got gold bars for, and if he's minus 75 bucks or less per ounce, that's a good deal. She should be able to beat Atmex, JM, and SD Bullion just like we do, folks. And remember, we're a brick and mortar only. We don't do any shipping. Uh, you have to be live in South Florida and actually physically, you don't have to live here, but you have to come and physically visit us to buy gold and silver. Uh, so best deals out there are gold bars at spot plus 73 or less. Uh, best deals out there for silver are here, where we go. I like to kind of tell you this, are 100 ounce bars and 10 ounce bars. We have them for spot plus $3 or less, depending on the quantity that you're buying on. Uh, and we do have one ounce generics at spot plus 350. I'm trying to locate a different source. I'm working with Hamilton Mint right now to become a distributor for them. And uh, uh, hopefully if I can do that, I can get you some products even cheaper here. But right now, best deal out there, 100 ounce and 10 ounce bars at spot plus three bucks or less. Um, and I think that's going to cover the show for the day. Uh, here, my, my theme for the year, my meme for the year, my saying for the year. Thank, think for yourself and always question authority. And if you want to take it one step further, Question what you believe. Question what knowledge you have in your head. Where did it come from? Is it knowledge that you learned on your own and established on your own, or was it spoon-fed to you by corporate media, schools, your parents, government? Always question yourself as well. Well, that's it. This is Brian Kuzmar with Commercial Rare Coins and Precious Metals in beautiful Lauderdale by the Sea. If you live in South Florida and you want to do business with us, call us at, or come in anytime between 10 and 4, and you can call us at 954-493-8811 between the hours of 10 and 4. Uh, and we're happy to help you out and uh, hook you up with the best deals. Don't forget, I also do uh, jewelry, artwork, antiques, coins, uh, rare coins, rare paper money, and uh, collectibles as well. So keep us in mind on other things too. Well, hey, thanks for watching. Have yourself a great day, and uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow. Bye now.